it came ultimately very close. George didn't take the threat seriously at all. It was in a perilous position. I don't think Tom Hicks or George Gillette really took just how perilous seriously. You know, the, the debt was being renewed on a weekly basis. I've, I've never come across that in all my business career. I've never come across a situation where the debt is being renewed on a weekly basis. George didn't take the threat seriously at all. Hicks and Gillette didn't want to sell. And we spoke in the Premier League as the impact of administration on losing points, etc. But by that time, the emails and the messages I was picking up from fans was we'd prefer to go into administration than have Hicks and Gillette stay around. Now, I wouldn't say that was from a majority of the fans because the majority are silent on that sort of thing. <laughs> the majority don't express a view. But I was quite surprised at the number of messages we were getting. And at that stage, I think the bank was picking up the same messages and it would have been much more willing to actually pull the trigger. The Premier League had actually confirmed that would Liverpool have gone into administration, there would have been a nine points deduction. Yes. And at the time, Liverpool were 18th in the Premier League table. It, it, it was a dangerous position to lose nine points. Yes. <laughs> so the chances that the new owners will want to have the opportunity to choose their own manager is high. So why do I want to make a change before they come in when the right time for a change, if there's going to be one, is after they've come in and it's their call as to whether they want to make the change or not. So um, Rafa and I had not got off to a good start, that's for sure. But at the same time, I wanted him to stay because I just wanted continuity. They brought in, I think, uh, a stable team um, that's um, you know, the behind the scenes piece, the executive piece. I think there's, there's a stability there, which uh, is good. They've rebuilt Anfield. Well, they're still in the process of rebuilding Anfield, but uh, to me, you know, the Hicks and Gillette project was a brand new stadium. I don't know why I kind of think of it as, as an Emirates stadium you know, nearby. Uh, the plan was to share it with Everton. One of the things I liked about John Henry was this is Anfield. So one of the great attractions of the Premier League is that you've got Titans playing each other every week and no certainty as to who's going to win the league. Uh, so the Premier League has become more and more kind of like the European Super League in many ways. It, it's here <laughs> in many ways, um, which attracts more and more players. It was Rafaela Pimenta, who's a, an agent. Um, and she said that in the past, people might say, I'd like to go and join, and they would quote a club. It may be a Premier League club. It was more likely to be Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, etc. Now, those people say, I want to play in the Premier League. They don't say, I want to play for Manchester United. I want to play for Liverpool. I want to play for Man City. I want to play in the Premier League. My own sense from speaking with Amanda Stavely at Newcastle is they see the Liverpool process of sensible data uh, analytical acquisition as the right way forward, not the kind of probably splash out huge amounts of money approach. You, I, th I, th I think what we should all be looking for is good, better than we've had 
financial fair play rules, which bring a sensible, deliverable process. Yeah, it's fair to say at the moment, Manchester City are above everybody else in terms of performance over the last five years. And what we don't want is to have one team continually uh, winning it. Um, obviously, there are open questions at the moment as to as to the integrity of that process. Um, but the Premier League is a stronger place for having Manchester City in it 